Welcome to Share a Pint, where we tap into the craft beer scene. I'm Jerry Hulla, your host. Today we're talking with Ty Christ from Hysteria Brewing Company. Thanks for being on the show, Ty. No problem, buddy. Glad to be here. Good. Uh, tell us how the name came about and why it was a good fit for the brand you wanted to build. Yeah, so the name came about um, as uh, home brewers. Um, we wanted to um, showcase, like, with Hysteria, what we we wanted to mean was the map pursuit about beer and and uh, just being relentless in uh, trying to create stuff that's really cool, really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so the term is hair. From hysteria, what's just like the mad pursuit about something. So really, and plus it sounded cool, and nothing else really sounded cool either. So it was kind of, it made sense, and also was like, all right, it actually sounds like a like, no one has a name like it. So that's right, really all it is. So cool. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, so not long ago, you uh, drew a lot of attention with the hashtag MVP. Yep. Uh, as it referenced Ravens quarterback and NFL MVP Lamar mm-hmm. Jackson. Uh, so share that story with our listeners who are kind of unfamiliar with it. Yeah, so um, we were always making this a double IPA. Um, if we were going back to the way that we used to uh, dry hop a couple of things. Um, there's different dry hop techniques that you can use and utilize, and we wanted to go back to something that, that we were doing. But when we dry hop a certain way, you can actually um, you can't reuse the yeast. And in a in a brewery like us, you try to reuse yeast a few times, mm-hmm. a few generations of it. Um, when you dry hop during like a primary fermentation, you you just can't use it now. There's hops inside of yeast, and you can't really clean it out. I mean, you can, but you have to have uh, a, a lab and everything. It's just easier to buy new yeast. So we uh, stopped doing doing uh, as much as that way, mm-hmm. only because that we could always have yeast, and when we were small, yeah, saving money helps us out. Absolutely. So we were like, okay, we're gonna try to go back to this dry hop technique. We're also gonna try to do something like just way over the top, uh, even more than we've ever done. Mm-hmm. So we're always gonna do this IPA. And then I was like, do something, it's gotta be something we can do that's gonna get the attention of people. So mm-hmm. I was at the, uh, at the Patriots Ravens game with uh, my friend Frank and um, the whole crowd was chanting MVP mm-hmm. constantly. And I was like, man, it'd be cool just to do a beer just called, it's called MVP. So mm-hmm. I did a research and nobody has a beer called MVP. Nice. There, was, there was one that's, there's some MVP things out there, but there's nothing close to us at all, but they were all like weird spelling. It was like E-M-V-E-E-P-E-E and stuff like that. Yeah. Or it was like, so-and-so is the MVP. Like but nothing that was just called just straight up MVP. Okay. And I was like, okay, I like this. And then, I mean, it, it, this is only like a quarter way through the season. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, no, it's going to be called, uh, um, what did I say it's going to be called? Did I change it and said it's going to be called Front Runner? Okay. Because he was a front runner in yep. the conversation, but obviously wasn't MVP because it was always mm-hmm. him and Russell, Wil- mm-hmm. Russell Wilson. Finally, I was like, we're going to MVP. That's, that's what we're going to do. It's going to be called MVP. And then uh, I already had the artwork getting started on, on our front runner. Okay. So then I called our artist and I said, look, it's going to be called MVP instead. Um, but also, I think I'm going to do like a hashtag MVP. So that way, anytime that MVP is searched, not only will Lamar's name come up or the Ravens come up, but also our yeah. beer who could be good marketing. Listening. Yeah. But, Sometimes I get it right. <laughs> Most of the time I'm asleep and I'm napping and I'm drunk. And it doesn't really make any sense. So um, we announced it, and I announced it weeks before we even actually brewed the beer. Mm-hmm. And I did that because I didn't want anybody else taking the name. Right. So I wanted to get it out there. Here's the label. Yeah. Um, I thought it was going to be big with, like, sports people around here. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's Ravens. We're making a playoff push. I, I didn't know it was going to be national news. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, you can hope that. Like, I thought sure. that, like... You know, like 98 Rock, I sent 98 Rock a message. I, said, or I tagged uh, you know, the Ravens, I tagged Lamar on it, like hoping mm-hmm. that it would get attention. Mm-hmm. And we honestly thought that the label was vague enough that we wouldn't get in trouble or anything. Yeah. It wasn't vague enough. Yeah. But we don't, I mean, I didn't know that. None of us here have ever dealt with anything like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, the NFL, well, first the Ravens called us. The Ravens mm-hmm. called us the day that we actually released the label. I mean, okay. they already had like 75 shares. It was, and, and like Baltimore Business Journal picked it up. Baltimore Sun picked it up. Uh, and this is all on the first day. Uh-huh. Well, they all called the Ravens and they mm-hmm. all called the NFL to get like, it's the sanctions. Why they would call any, I don't know. So yeah. it, it, it was made a bigger deal than it really should have been. It's, right. it's, it's a freaking beer label, man. Like yeah. it's, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. At least I thought it, we all thought that would that big a deal. Yeah. So the Ravens called us that night and they were like, look, you got to take it down. And we we're like, well, we understand to take it down. And then they were like, it looks too much like the Ravens, um, um, a uniform or like okay we'll, we'll tweak it we'll work on it yeah we don't want to take it down right now because we already got momentum 
and like people are like sharing this and we take it down we you know like every, everything we just work for is, is gone right so they were like all right we got to work on something quick so we we're like okay so we were like tweaking it we went through like maybe 10 different iterations mm. of, of the label and the nfl hit us up like a week later um and they sent us a cease and desist via email mm-hmm. and then FedEx the next day, an actual paper one, yeah. um, saying, hey, there's a, there's a thing that's called NFL markings. Yeah. I didn't know what that means. We had a, so we had to get a lawyer involved, and NFL markings was that it looked too much like the Ravens the uniform. Mm-hmm. So that's when we took off number eight, removed the stripe on the helmet, removed mm-hmm. the stripes on the, on the legs, um, put hysteria on the chest, and then put our logos on the, on the helmet. Uh, we just went one step further and put a visor on the face so that way nobody could say anything about anybody. Mm, okay. and, um, and the NFL said you had a week to get everything done. So it was, it was like December 11th that was our cutoff date. So um, December 11th, I pulled all this stuff down. And they sent me like stuff I had to pull down on our social media. Mm. It was the Ravens logo we had shared two years ago saying uh, the Ravens kick off and I come out and enjoy the game and watch way to take that down. And then I shared the, um, the uh, Ravens schedule mm-hmm. and the NFL make us remove that as well. Just sharing the schedule. Like, literally, went to their page and hit share. Yeah. And we can't do that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So, so we can't make money. They said we're making money on the NFL. And I was like, okay, well, we're not the only brewery that does yeah, anything yeah. like that. Yeah, pretty much everyone in this yeah. area advertises, hey, the Ravens game's yeah, on. Let's we, go check it out. It's all we did. Like, just share, like, the Ravens logo and then share the Ravens schedule. But, right. So we had got the assist and assist. We, we did everything we possibly could to, to fix it. I sent everything on the 11th, or mm-hmm. I sent it on the 10th and said, we're going with this tomorrow. Right. Let's let you know. No response. Yeah. I said, okay. So I uh, took everything down and then shared the new label, fingers crossed and hoping that the NFL would be okay with it. Right. They didn't say anything, and then we got an email uh, the next day on the 12th saying, everything's cool, but we're going to be monitored from now on. So now I try to make fun of it instead of saying yeah. the NFL, we say the the uh, football league that's in the nation just yeah. like trying to poke fun at it, which is what this beer is poking fun at it. Yeah. Because the C and D was a hundred percent. It was perfumed. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it made the whole room smell amazing. So in the original post, when we got the C and D. I said, this paper actually smells amazing. They have a lot of money to throw around. So we were going to have another name for this beer. It, the, the Ravens didn't, didn't win the, the one playoff game to get us into where we wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So we just renamed this, be- this beer which is the follow-up to MVP of this paper actually smoking. Right, and that's what I had in there, that we were definitely going to say, hey, you know, here's a beer that yep. you take advantage of poking fun at it by yeah. saying, yeah, this paper actually smells amazing. Yeah, because <laughs> it really did. Like, the C&D was 100% perfect. And who potpourri's, you know, I don't know, cease and desist list? I, I don't uh, the Apparently NFL, the NFL does. Money. <laughs> yeah. So you feel really scared, but at the same time, you're like, well, at least it smells good in here. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. Like, you don't want the NFL to, like, come down on you because we can't afford yeah. anything. To go, yeah. We were like, whatever you want to do. But we also aren't going to change like everybody thought that we were like like that we told the nfl oh, screw you guys we're gonna to keep the name mvp and we're like nobody said anything about mvp like you it's not trademarked right it's not trademarked because the mvp is in every single sport yeah they were just worried about the logo and design the logo. looking too close yeah. to it yeah we literally were like hey you know what this is a really cool year we we actually have a person on the offense yeah that could be the mvp yeah let's name the beer after what's happening in baltimore and then Absolutely. we had haters and everything that said we're being dumb and we're like no we we followed everything the nfl said never once said anything we we're just like sure whatever you want us to do and the nfl approved everything so yeah we're cool it's it's kind of one of those things where you're drawing attention to it whether it's like a, a parent where you're like hey we, we're doing this we've been doing this as kids forever until mom and dad found out and then mm-hmm. we got in trouble you know or for me i think about my uh, past life as an athletics and we were always like hey if our sport can fly under the radar and the athletic director doesn't you know it sucks he doesn't know what's going on it'd be nice if you paid attention to right. us but the only time we want to peek the radar is like if we're doing something really really cool right because otherwise you peek it and then they're just you know microscope and they're paying attention all the time and you're yeah. like yeah, I, don't, uh, I don't understand oh, and man. speaking of like attention and stuff like that yeah. it's really funny because um, it, people started trading for the uh, beer and everything just because of like the, the, the label and everything. And mm-hmm. then it started going like throughout the country. And then uh, there's other news outlets like throughout the country, that they're picking it up. But like there's a, there's a really big community that's like the uh, beer, uh, like the uh, trading community. Mm-hmm. And people trade beer. Like, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but like beer trading is huge. Mm-hmm. And we've never been the brewery that, that everybody like really trades. Like every, every now and then like, people will trade it. Our stuff is being sent all like the MVP was being sent all over the place, and all these people were saying, "I can't believe that like that it, there's a beer, it, it, it's a brewery in Maryland that's making hazies, it's good and everything." And we laugh because we've been brewing these exact IPAs since we right. opened, right. but now all of a sudden, 
this one's ranked so so high and untapped. And it's like, it's the same beer we always brew. It's just, <laughs> but I guess, like, it, it's funny because, like, hype really does uh, taint what you're thinking of a beer. Like, it, it really does play a part in, in how you perceive, like, how a beer tastes. If you stood in line for something, it's going to taste better than being able to go and, and get it. But I don't understand sitting in line against something if you can walk up to somebody and just go get it. And right. it tastes just as good. Right. Which is why the idea, like, we could have made a gigantic spectacle about it mm-hmm. and then had, had people waiting outside overnight to get this beer, which they would have. Right. And I, we didn't want that. So we did pre-sales. Yeah. And we're like, we don't, you don't have to come in at all this week. Like, yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. Just buy the beer, make sure it's yours, we'll set it aside. The only, the only thing we did do was we had 60 cases worth of black cans because we only planned on doing 60 cases. Oh, okay. We ended up doing 150 of them. Wow. But we only planned on doing 60 cases, so we got 60 cases worth of black cans. We had to go to other breweries and get them. Like, mm-hmm. You can't just buy a little bit. You have to buy truckloads. You have to buy 14 pallets of, of certain color cans. Wow. So we found other breweries that had them. They let us buy up to 60 cases, so, so we went and got it. And there was no way for me to track first first if you buy first and you get black cans right. there was really no way to promise anybody that unless you showed up early to get that so i said if you show up early enough when we open you can get the black cans mm. but you don't have to show up at all you can still get them like on monday you don't have to come on saturday right and there was 250 people in the line mm. an hour before we opened for the black cans so i couldn't imagine what would happen if we just opened up sales and said first come first serve period yeah but and we could have and we could have been on the news even more about a, a line that's wrapped around but we just want people to have beer Right. Well, it's like when you're talking about it and you're creating like a stir and you're not trying to, I'm thinking about just recently, you know, Russian River had their annual release of Pliny the Younger. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and I'm I'm looking at, uh, you know, Kyle's out there from Untapped and he's, you know, and it's, it's a mecca quest. I mean, people are in search of it like it's a whale. It is. And, and I, you know, I think he was there five and a half hours before he finally got in and what he was able to get. and, And I'm like, that's nice, but I'm with you. I'm like, if it's a good beer, I just want to be able to get a good beer. Yeah. I don't want to have to go once a year under these circumstances. I have to take some right. sort of special trip. And like, I get it. Like, it is fun. Like, there are things that are fun. Like, when Brilli Oak does releases, like, if people turn it into, like, a tailgating thing and a fun yeah. atmosphere. I don't have time to do it. Like, I have two kids yeah. and, and a wife, and I, and I work a ton here. I mean, but, I, I mean, it is cool. Like, I love tailgating. Mm-hmm. And if that's what they're doing, and the end result is you get to drink beer with people, like, like hard to find beers that, like, Maybe they did go stand in line at Russian River for, for five hours. Now they're here and they're sharing their beer with you. That's really cool. Yeah. Like, that it's it's it, it 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 it's awesome. I just I would rather be the brewery that is just easy accessible. Mm-hmm. I don't mind selling kind of stuff, but I'd rather everybody get the beer. Right. I mean, cool. Do I want hype? Sure. Like, I want everybody to be excited about every single beer. Yeah. But I also rather be excited about hey, there's going to be enough. You can come in whenever you don't have to wait in line. You can bring your kids and not, they're 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 fighting and you can yeah. chill, have a beer, and then still walk out with a four pack. At the end of the day, you're just trying to make good beer for people to enjoy, and so exactly, yeah. I mean, we want to sell every drop. That's the, that's absolutely. The, it's a business. We want you to buy everything, right? But if you buy it in one day versus over the course of a week, there's no difference. Still bought the beer, yeah, and there's no line. Like we're fine. We're fine being cool. that brewery. So yeah. Did you guys uh, end up getting any response from the Ravens or Lamar Jackson? Like especially after he was named MVP? No. But I know Lamar has labels. Mm-hmm. That's all I know. Okay. I'm trying to. We're we're hoping he signs them. I, I don't I don't think he ever will. But I know mm-hmm. that another NFL player asked us for for uh, labels, so we sent him a handful of labels for him. That he's he he wanted him. So the Ravens knew about it. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. The Ravens called us, but the actual players knew knew all about the beer. Sure. So and and like I mean at that point like we didn't really expect a response from the players because mm-hmm. they were in the middle of a really big like a playoff push and right. you know, they're chasing. A season that we've never had before, so we we t- totally understood. But I mean, if they ever want to come out, hang out. Beers on me. So, yeah, for yeah. sure. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so obviously, as we talked about, it raised uh, you know a lot of awareness about hysteria. Mm-hmm. So how have you noticed that impacting you since then? Oh yeah. So we um, have gotten contacted by by other breweries that have never known about us before about other cease and desist that we're working on right now. Mm-hmm. Just like little things that, and, and, and they're bigger breweries. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's, our, our sales now are way, way more in the tap room. Um, like they, they probably tripled in, in a sales since, since MVP. Um, 
it, it's almost like more people know about us. Yeah. Which I, I thought there's there's people there's still people that are in Colombia mm-hmm. that are like I never knew about you guys, but I saw this MVP and I'm like we've been here for three years. I mean, <laughs> we're up the street and they're like yeah. I have no idea. So it's 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 so mind boggling that some people don't know of a brewery in your backyard. But mm-hmm. I also get it too. Like some people aren't into beer and or maybe they're just discovering that oh wow there's this really cool thing that's happening in Maryland where all these really cool breweries. There's a lot of good breweries in Maryland. And I mean, there's there's somewhere around this. You got Black Flag, you got Reckless that's going to open on Saturday, and you got Sapwood Cellars. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a pretty cool spot to come in Columbia. And at the most, it's like an eight minute drive to another brewery. I mean, Black Flag is right across the street, and they're killing it. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's really cool. But some of these people don't realize that that's happening in Maryland. And when they do, we want to be the brewery that they can come and drink anything they want too. Right. So we try to have different beers on, and like have like ones that maybe not like you know like we always. Uh, we always kid and always call people who like, like, like the hate stuff, like Hayes Boys. Mm-hmm. I love hazy beers. Yeah. I also love clean, crisp lagers. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people love, love lagers. It, it's the number one selling beer style in the entire world for well, a reason. Yeah. So you, you should have a lager on. <laughs> but they are hard for us to brew because it takes six to eight weeks of fermenting. Mm-hmm. And beers like, uh, like Way of the World or Amber take two and a half weeks. Okay. Two and a half weeks, eight weeks. Yeah. So. And, 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 so it's different things like that, but I mean, but sales are definitely better, which is cool because we're a small company, so we don't have to worry about bills and payroll. That's a really good thing. Absolutely. So and I think uh, when I was in earlier, I think when we, you mentioned that all of a sudden, you know, you, you were doing collabs with some people, but mm-hmm. it was like, now you're like, no, no, everybody wants to collab yeah, with yeah. us. Like now they all know yeah, about it. Setting us up. No, we're returning yeah. our phone calls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were times we reached out. To, uh, I, I mean, sometimes like, I guess we're reaching out to like names that were a little bit bigger than, you know. We should have, mm-hmm. but now they're agreeing to uh, collabs, and some of them actually reached out to us to to do them. So it, we've got a handful in the works. We're we're, we're excited about them. Um, it really, it's just you get to brew and learn from mm-hmm. from some of your uh, favorite brewers in the industry, and that's what we try to that's what we try to brew with. That's what we try to collab with. Is who else is uh, can we learn something from? Who else is going to have who has the same mindset as us that just wants to make a good beer? And that's what we're trying to do with our collabs is yeah. have fun, but also want to learn some stuff from them. Right. And so some of these these other breweries coming up, we're, we're excited to just watch them. Yeah. And we're excited that they want to work with us. So we're like, all right, cool. Well, so. see, now that you've learned how to navigate through the waters of the NFL, the, now maybe you get together with Rob and uh, Judy at Checker Spot and you yeah. go, hey, you're, you guys are, you know, a Lamar Jackson pass away from the stadium. Yeah. And uh, since you're so close, hey, let's collab on, you know, yeah. something that Believe ties I, in. They were our second collab ever that we did for for here we we did one um what was it called it was it was this peach ipa and they they sourced all the peaches and everything and came in here we were brand new just brewing on that mm-hmm. they weren't even open yet when we did it so i guess it is about time we do a well and we talked with beer. rob recently and that's part of what he was saying is because they have steve marsh there you know the godfather of uh, cask beer from yep. heavy seas he days is, yeah. and they, they said he's like the fruit master he is. they said he just finds he gets, fruit everywhere he gets he gets the most out of fruit not just like finds fruit but he like processes it and has it ready to go for a brewery yeah like i, I he, he just started in a little side company and just sells all I mean, he's 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 a nut and i love him but he yeah. is a nut when it comes to fruit yeah. how do you get all this stuff it's like yeah. he's always looking for, like the Paul Paul's. Rob said he. Paul Rob said he stopped on the side of the road, you know, because again it grows in the wild and yeah. it's native to this area. Yeah. And he's like, you know, people know about the Paw Paw, kind of keep it a secret, and they protect the Paw Paw. He goes, Steve be driving down, he knows where it is on the side of the road, and it pull off out. the side of the road and pick Paw Paw. Yeah. You and know. then they brew a beer with it. Yeah. And then they collab like with Flying like, Dog. How do you do, yeah. Like how yeah. do you? Like he's just he's he's very good at stuff like that. And they have really big freezer space. That's the thing that Rob was saying that yeah, was do. their benefit is they got so much freezer space. He said that you know we can hold on to it. He goes, and then if breweries need it, you know, they can come to us because yeah. people don't always have that luxury. He says, because yeah, you're we always going to get juices and it's, it's fruit. He said, you're never going to get a puree or anything from them. He goes, we're using the fruit in its purest form. Yeah. Yeah. So we can get like purees and everything, but I mean, who knows how long the puree has been sitting there. We actually yeah. had some issues. So like some of the stuff you, well, not some of the stuff, but everything that we buy through like all these suppliers that all they do is like to, to is like make stuff for breweries mm-hmm. on like a on a big scale so when we do like all our fruited uh sours the same thing with anybody like us rer uh you know barely a crooked crab does an amazing you know fruited sour mm-hmm. but we always get it from like a company called bsg or we get it from um there's other companies the oregon fruit and stuff like that and mm-hmm. what they do is they they pure everything and then they have basically um they sanitize everything inside so they they bring it up to like 180 degrees don't boil it but they just kill kill off of the bacteria 
and then we can use it and, and, mm. not, and, and there's no there's no way it would ever infect or make any beer bad but we have had bad fruit yeah. and we have had to dump entire batches because of mm. fruit but that's the thing when you're using real ingredients things can happen things might take longer so it's just one of those things you have to do but they're doing it themselves which is cool we, yeah. We don't have that already. And Sarah <laughs> talked about that when we talked to, with them in Milk House, just the fact that, you know, they have to plan so far out because yep. of the seasonals for fruit or mm -hmm. they've got it somewhere fermenting or some way that they can hold on to it. But, you know, they're not always ready to make a particular beer when that fruit's in season. I think she said the first time right. they, they made the one with peaches, they said, you know, she's like, this, this is amazing. She's like, why aren't people buying it? And it just wasn't the time of year for people to be interested in peaches and eating peaches and things. And they're like, okay, now we've got to really plan this out. Things, things really are... You got to plan like when we try to do sours and stuff our series is called happy little accident series so mm -hmm. like the hla series yeah you do have to plan things out you wouldn't do like an apple cobbler in august right you would do it in november yeah but like you, you got to like figure things like like where it's going to go so we're always having fun with what's what's a fruit we can use that's a summer fruit okay it's or we can just use one fruit or do we use two or three fruits how do we do it yeah. do we make it taste like a cake do we just have the fruit and just the sour so there's all kinds of different things. The sour thing's fun to do. Yeah. Downside of it is that none of us um, filter mm. and none of us uh, pasteurize. So there's there's still live yeast inside these cans and there's real fruit in the cans. And the thing that fruit has that yeast loves is sugar. Mm -hmm. So when 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 like brewers like us and Brilli Oak and like all, all the people that we're talking about, when we say make sure it stays cold. We mean that because if it stays at 65 degrees for a couple of days, mm -hmm. that yeast turns back on, wakes up, starts eating that sugar, and that's when you have all the either exploding cans, which are dangerous, right? Or you have ones that are overcarved, and you open it up, it just it just spews out foam. Yeah, it's real. Like it's real ingredients. Could we do you know fake stuff and never have any of that worry? Sure. Would it cost us a fraction of what it does to make the beer? Sure. Is it right? No. Yeah. It's not. But we also need the consumers and the retailers to also understand that and work with us. Right. We can give you what you want, but you have to actually do your due diligence and keep the stuff cold. Can't keep it cold, just drink it as soon as you can. And if that's the thing that, that, that I think that, that like all the industry is learning too mm -hmm. is that. But I mean, it happens. Yeah. But there's been times we had to recall beer because people, not, not consumers, but there's been accounts that have kept it warm. That was one of the things when we uh, we were recently talking with Keith at Weradaka, and that's what he was saying. He's like, you know, we don't know that we have enough of a presence because we finally started canning. He yep. said, you know, he'd been really waiting for it, and now it feels right. And uh, he said, I don't know that we have enough presence to go into a distributor and say, hey, you only get this beer if you can keep it cold. He goes, but we're going to try. He goes, for exactly the same reasons you're talking about. He said, you know, he goes, I don't want somebody's first beach or IPA. It's been sitting there for three weeks. Right. But uh, that's the thing, too, is that we we actually don't send the the HLA series out in cans anymore. We had, we had too much of an issue. People mm -hmm. did not listen to us at all. So we we're like, okay, well, you don't you don't get to sell the beer anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you want cans, it's brewery only, and then we'll send draft out because draft it's almost impossible. There are accounts that'll keep it warm, but yeah, most of the time they keep their their cakes cold. But yeah, we don't send out the uh, the fruited sours in cans anymore because right. people just can't or not not people. Re some retailers just can't listen and they ruined it for everybody. Mm, that's terrible. Well, we're talking about putting stuff in your beers. Uh, you recently did another one that was the uh, Royal Rush. So tell the listeners a little bit about what was unique about that and what you used in that particular yeah. beer. So that's still conditioning. That's that's one of the things that we're saying. We're not going to release the beer until it's right. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is, is that when you again when you use real ingredients, sometimes it takes a while to get the flavors you want. Mm -hmm. We uh, did a test batch of Royal Rush, and basically it's brewed with a, a ton of uh, Royal Farms uh, coffee cakes. Okay. Uh, Royal Farms is well aware of it. They've seen the label. They approved everything. Cool. They they want to like uh, they're gonna give us um, some stuff to give away it, it, like during the release. I told them I give them a case. They said they give us gift cards and like cool. T-shirts, and I was like, sweet. I love their chicken, so I'm gonna take a gift card myself. Nice. But um, so it's it, it, it it's it, it's a liquid coffee cake basically. Mm. It's eight percent liquid coffee cake. Um, the initial test batch was hands down one of the best beers I've ever had. Mm. I mean, I was blown away by it. Um, on a bigger scale, it's just we're, we're just learning how it's it's cinnamon, nutmeg, and stuff like that, and those take time to saturate and go in there. So it's close, it's getting there, mm -hmm. but we're still we're just adding and tweaking and making sure. But it's in tank. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really just waiting until we're like, aha, that's it, 
and it's very close and we could release it right now sure but it's not liquid coffee cake and it's got to be liquid coffee cake and that's what i've always respected about you guys is that there's that much pride in your product mm -hmm. to say it could be really really good yeah but we want it to be perfect from our standards yeah. and you know and you wait Right. And that's just how it is. And people that really love craft beer understand that. Exactly. Uh, and, and you get a lot of hype. And then you're like, oh, I'm, now I'm really anticipating it. It was exactly. going to be this week. It could be another week or so. But now I'm constantly yeah. watching the website. That's to, not on purpose know. either. That's yeah. just, like right now, it's a fantastic beer. It's mm. delicious. But is it a coffee cake in a glass? It's not yet. Okay. It's way more than it was a week ago because mm -hmm. we're tweaking it. We're adding. The thing about cinnamon, it... It takes a few days for it to like show through. So you can, if you add a ton of it, and then three days you overdid it, and you can't take away. Mm. You can only add. Yeah. So you have to add. You wait a couple of days. Oh, there. Okay, it's better. Still need more. Add a little bit more. Got to wait a few days. Okay, it's closer. But you don't just want to be like, ah, I have to just dump everything, and then you have a beer you can't drink because it's, right. it's it's all cinnamon. Right. Like it's not a fireball beer. <laughs> it is a it, it, it's a it, it's it's a coffee cake beer. So mm -hmm. that's the downside about working with real ingredients is mm -hmm. that. It's, it's making sure it's saturated, making sure that it tastes right, and when it tastes right, it'll be released. I wanted to release it last week, but oh well. When it's out, it'll be the best version of it. Yeah. And I'm excited about it. That's cool. It's, it's one of my favorite beers we, that we've brewed. Like, I'm stoked about this beer. Awesome. When it's right. Cool. Cool. Um, well, are there any other uh, unique beers that are kind of coming up that you either want to tease or maybe highlight? Stuff you're um, thinking about down the road? or Yeah, so we're, we're doing... Um, uh, morning afters come back out after like a year hiatus. Uh, morning afters are coffee milk stout. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually our most awarded beer that we that we were made. Cool. Um, just a milk stout with coffee, but it tastes like coffee and cream. Really good. Trash Panda is coming back out. We have the biggest batch we've ever done is fermenting right now. Mm. Hopefully, like two weeks, and that'll we're, we're going to put that in some shelves and actually put it out in out in stores. Um, so I'm excited about that. What else is coming out? Um, we have a collab with Aslan. Which I'm really excited about. We're still I hear really good show. things about them. I haven't made it down that way, but my friends really down in Virginia song. really like that brewery. They're one of my top five favorite breweries. Okay. Plus the owners mm -hmm. are great guys. Cool. They're our brother-in-laws, and they're just they're really cool. We got stopped out about two or three months ago. Stopped, or maybe longer than that. We got stopped out there, and they like showed us around, sat down with us, had a bunch of beers with us, talked about everything, and I was like, I like these guys. So we were like, let's do something, and they were like, F yeah. So we're gonna nice. do a, something with them. Um, I think the thing I'm most excited about, mm -hmm. you know what's funny, is mm -hmm. we're doing a, a basic Kolsch. Uh -huh. we're, we're like throwing out ideas, like one of these is like a lemongrass Kolsch or something like that for this summer. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to try to brew it next week. I'm just excited about something I can just like, for me, like on tap at my house right now, I have a Hofbrau Original Pills. Oh, or, nice. Or, or lager. Hofbrau yeah. Original Lager. That's my football beer. Mm -hmm. I, I buy a keg of it, it goes down there. Every Sunday, that, that's what I drink. But when it's when it's summertime, like that's that's what I drink all the time. Like that's what I love. Like, mm -hmm. I I can drink these all day. Like I have friends that like drop off things. We we know other breweries. We're always like training each other's beers. Yeah. Like I'm going to cook a crab tomorrow to get their galactic uh, a crab lord. They want some of this. So I'm yeah. like, cool. We're gonna stop by. We'll we'll hang out. We'll have a couple of beers together. Um, so I, I can drink the hazy stuff anytime I want. We we brew it. But something about a clean, crisp lager. Mm -hmm. Even though a Kolsch isn't a lager, it's an ale that's lagered. Mm -hmm. But Something that's clean and crisp. I'm just, I'm excited about that. Right. And I know it's not the sexy style, but that's what I'm excited about. Well, they do it very well. I mean, when we were talking with Mark at Adroit, that was kind of his thing. As he said, you know, he goes, we've gotten better at our, you know, our colches and our pills nerves. Yeah. He said, that's not what we're known for. Right. He said, but he said, they're good. He goes, they're not perfect. He goes, but they will be. Yeah. Because that's what they want to be able to do. They're able to have that as an option for some people. Exactly. Uh, Speaking of Marco, mm -hmm. we've got a collab with them coming up too. We we had a, we had a, uh, started the conversations last year. Both got really busy. They were in the middle of expanding everything, their tap room, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. And uh, and some things can happen. But um, he's on he was on vacation last week, which reminded me I'm supposed to hit him up this week. So I'm gonna call him. Definitely done this. Yeah. Well, so. uh, he was on the episode not that long ago, really? and uh, he was a great guest. They're, and very they're, they're that great was fun. There, man. We were able to uh, coordinate with him and and do the episode right before they had their big uh, sixth anniversary. So yep. their Dawn of a Dark Day six. So we were able to help them kind of push that a little bit, and then went down for the event, and it was really well attended, it's, and just that's a fun that's place. A cool, it's not only is it a cool place, but they have some of the most unique. Like they're um, what's their what's their like two percent like green and red like, like oh the, the illusion of safety 
They're, they're, I, I mean, they have a lot of versions, but the illusion of safety is just like a sour gose series that's almost like drinking tropical fruit juice. Oh, yes, yes. You know, and there's, you know, probably, I've had probably nine different versions, and I told him, oh, I was well, like, well. there's not a version I haven't had that I didn't like. Right. And They uh, do the craziest, they're, they're my favorite breeds, like, yeah. they're my top five for sure. It's, it's really cool. Like, so, so far, like, in my top five, it's a Joy Theory and Aslan are there, mm -hmm. and they want to do stuff with us. Cool. And I'm, like, so, like, like. I'm like fanboy. I was going to say fanboy. Like, they're like breweries that I love and, mm -hmm. and they want to do stuff with. Now I just got to get um, a Trillium to, uh, to uh, do stuff with me because they're one of my top five too. Yeah. Trillium, Vale, those guys. So actually, it's funny. One of my other favorite breweries, um, people are going to be like, what? Oh, really? And it's uh, Ducal. Oh, yeah. Love them. They do some are, good stuff and been around for a while. I was really sorry when they lost that uh, tap room area where it was right down there in the Arundel Mills. Um, you talk about doing some different collabs and things. Uh, Lost Arc Distillery is uh, right down there, a couple doors from here. Right, they're they're literally our, our next door neighbor. Any you know plans to work Ton. with them on a future project? Or is, yeah. Can't wait till the barrels come in and get done. Yeah, it's it's all yeah, yeah. There, um, there's actually a whole drill in the wall over there already. Okay, we already sent some stuff over. Nice. We're uh, they're they're awesome. Brad is one of the coolest guys I've ever met. Um, it's fun, like. Uh, he's asked me to like help him out with some sales stuff. So like I've been working with him a lot more, like like actually on like that side, just to like mm -hmm. just give him ideas and like everything. Because I've been doing this a lot longer than he's been doing the sales side on that. So he's like, we should do some stuff together. So like I've been helping him out. Um, I'm excited for that man. Like yeah. they they are they are about to explode, cool. and I am stoked. You should definitely hit hit them up for a thing because they. Awesome. They have some some a pool now with, uh -huh. some, with some new people on board that's gonna blow your mind. It's awesome. crazy, and their new whiskey that came out was fantastic. They have some more whiskeys. I, I'm I'm excited. Like like Lost Ark is one of my favorite things to it's to like it's like happen near us at all. And I'm I'm stoked about Lost Ark. Cool. And they yeah. just got a new bar, so now when you go in there, you can actually well soon. I think they just it, it's a few things to go through. You can actually sit down and get mixed drinks. Before when you went in, you could only have samples, like literally like half ounce samples, and mm. then that's it. Buy a bottle, see you later. There's nothing you can do. Well, now they'll be able to actually do mixed cocktails, which no, means cool. beer mixed cocktails. Which Absolutely, means a lot of other things that yeah. they couldn't do before. So I'm stoked, and they just completely redid their whole entire bar. Like it's totally different. And it's really cool. So, so this there. whole little area that's kind of tucked away in an industrial area, like you said, that a lot, a lot of people know about, is about to just really have, between you guys being established, them starting to explode. And then when I walked in, you were talking about, you know, a barbecue place literally next door. Yeah. So now you're going to have food options. It's obviously going to help both of you guys. Yep. I mean, so like the food places that's moving in there is a bullhead bit beef, which uh, just got rated the uh, number one um, a food truck in Howard County. Uh, like the fan favorite Howard County, like what were votes on it? Mm -hmm. um, they just won that, and uh, he's always been one of our favorites. Um, I mean, the food's fantastic, it's, it, and it's not just like oh, it's a pit beef place. They do all kinds of stuff. Like they do like a brisket tacos, which are phenomenal. Mm. They, they, so they have like a taco lineup. They have all these sandwiches lineup. They have things called the meat salad, which is literally just a bunch of meat and vegetables, and it's just fantastic. And so when you first walk into our place. It's like a vestibule that's right there. Mm -hmm. We had to put that vestibule there because of the county, believe okay. it or not, because of of, uh, of square footage for the tap room versus parking. Uh -huh. That's why the vestibule is there. It's just a weird area that's that's that was legal for us. So when you walk in, there's going to be a window right there. Mm -hmm. You can order food, and then it's all to go, but there's plenty of seats right behind you in the tap room. Exactly. So it's, it's a two separate companies that are working together to to uh, do something really cool. So that'll allow us to open up at lunchtime instead of four o'clock, because then we actually have food. And then it'll also just allow us to have food at all times, because while food trucks are fantastic, they are also pretty unreliable. Mm -hmm. And that's the downside about food trucks. Yeah. If their truck breaks down, if they get a better better spot that they opened up, they, they're a business too, and we understand that, mm -hmm. just we don't have food. Yeah. So now we'll have food, and it's not us, so. yeah. Well, food best of both worlds. You have food, but worlds. you don't have to worry about the yep. prep and, worry about anything. And, and I know you're going to have good food, and you can bring it over and eat whatever you want. You can still go out and bring in food. You can sure. still order food, sure. But yeah. I mean, there's fantastic food right there. Like, why, why, why wait? You can just yeah. walk up there and order. So we're really excited about that. That's awesome. So yeah, us, a brewery, a barbecue place, and a distillery, literally all in the same. Like we're we're next door neighbors to Lost Ark, mm -hmm. and they are subleasing a spot from us. 
Okay. So, yeah. Cool. It's cool. That is pretty cool. It's like a small, small union thing going on right now. <laughs> the only unions, oh, we just happen to be next to each other. It got really lucky with being next to each other. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Pretty uh, well, tell people where they can find you online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, things like that. Uh, Hysteria Brewery. Okay. Hysteria Brewery and then HysteriaBrewing.com. But, but uh, all social media is Hysteria Brewery. We try to make fun of things and poke fun at people and do crazy, stupid videos. We don't like taking ourselves seriously at all. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we try to purposely make people laugh. Sometimes it's really dumb. But, hey, I uh, like keeping things simple. Yeah, when we were it. talking with Mark at Detroit, that was one of the things that we kind of talked about the social media. And he goes, look, he goes, if I want advice to new breweries, it's get one handle across all platforms. And I'm like, hey, that's great when it works out. And sometimes it doesn't, but uh, that, make yeah. it simple. <laughs> it, it is. It, it, and that's when we first opened. We had we had different different um, uh, uh, handles. And that was mm -hmm. one of the things that like I sat down. And I was like, we should definitely just put be, just say at. And then say Hysteria Brewery, and then have the logos above it instead of being like Twitter Hysteria Brewing, Facebook Hysteria Brewing Brewery. It's dumb, just all one thing. It just makes it easy because you can search one thing and find us all yeah. and everything. So that's yeah, it's really good advice for sure. It's cool. Well, we've learned about the brewery. Uh, let's get to know you a little bit, Ty. Tell us a little bit more about your role here. I am director of sales and marketing and assistant brewer. Um, I don't brew near as much as I used to. Thank mm -hmm. God. I it's it's a uh, busy um the guy who brews all the time is billy mm -hmm. and i i basically do whatever he needs to be done if i have time to do those things like i i used to brew all the time mm -hmm. and i don't need to anymore which is good because i was brewing all the time and then going out and selling so it was like 15 hour days sometimes and it just wasn't really fun mm. especially when you have a pregnant wife yeah so but yeah i um so, so my job is uh Making sure that uh, distributors have our product, um, manage the, the sales that are out and about, um, make sure that uh, uh, beer is fresh in the market, make sure that uh, pretty much any, any outside event, any festival, anything uh, like that is uh, set up through me. Um, man that, staff it, whether it be me or our sales rep, Jen, or some of the bartenders. Um, and the marketing, I run all the social media, uh, all the marketing. Um, how things are, are are like on the labels, like what the labels look like, how they uh, how they are, uh, how things are said, just pretty much everything like that, and then brew as needed, basically, or or help brewing as needed. So, nice. I, I mean, with like Billy, sometimes all you have to do is is a keg off a batch of beer, and he's been here for twelve hours, and hey, I have three hours to to a keg off a batch of beer. So, like, I try to help. We we all try to help each other out as much as we can. Mm -hmm. So, like. If there's like festivals and it's just me going to a festival, then maybe Billy's off on a Saturday and he'll come out and like do a festival with me. So, but again, there's only a handful of full time employees. Like, literally, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five of us, five, five full time employees, and we have a lot of beer in the market and yeah. five people. It's really tough. So, yeah. But yeah, that's what I do. Pretty much a little bit of everything, but a lot of. Doing doing things like 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 this like right. my uh, what the owners told me was that they hired me to be the face of the company basically okay like when we have like the Annapolis stuff when we go down and we start doing all of the um, like the pushes for like new laws in Maryland I'm mm -hmm. I'm there like I'm I'm there all night every day I'm out with the senators out with the delegates so that's basically what I do for the company okay how did you get started in the craft beer industry so I don't know if you know this mm. some people do if, if like people who have who have seen me in other things would, would know this, but the reason why I have this job is because of Duke Law. 100% mm -hmm. is because of them. I used to work there. Oh, okay. And they are the ones that got me into craft beer. Uh -huh. When I first turned 21, I tell a story all the time. So it's, if you've heard it's it. It's a good sorry. story though, it is right? A good story. If you tell a lot, it's gotta be yeah. a good story. It, it is because I, 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 it's like I get really excited when the thing that, like my career is awesome. Like I get to work with beer every day mm -hmm. and they, uh, so like when I turned 21, I was working at Bass Pro at Arona Mills and like all my friends were like, we're going out on your birthday or, or like birthday weekend, just like, let's just go somewhere. And I was like, cool. I don't want to, I don't want to go out to just drink. Mm -hmm. Like I have, I, I've been doing that since, since like when, when I've been in college or anything, like I already, I already know what Coors Light tastes like. I already know what, what the Natty Bo tastes like, which I love Natty Bo. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, I was like, I, I want to find somewhere where there's, where there's good beer. Mm -hmm. This is early 2000s. So like there was really not. There was only a handful of breweries, period. Right. So my friends were like, well, there's a brew pub. It's called Ducal, and they're right there. And I was like, yeah, let's go there. And Ducal at the time had, it was, I can't remember exactly. It was either three or six beers on a 
on a flight. I think there were six beers total, and I got two flights or something like that. Mm. But the very first beer I had was Bad Moon Porter, which is a basic porter. Mm -hmm. And I remember drinking it, and I remember looking at it being like, what the F is this? Yeah. I, I didn't know beer could taste like that. It was right then and there, I was like, whatever this is, I want this all the time. This is all I wanted. This is all I wanted to do. I want to learn how to do it. Like, can I do this at home? Oh my God, I can do it at home. And then I got into home brewing. Mm -hmm. And it was the thing that led me down a road where some people will call it alcoholism. I call it a hobby. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it, it was the point where I just wanted to try everything. I, I wanted, I, I, I would just go to like Dawson's in Distance of Verna Park and I would like just an hour just being there, just being like, I don't know what to do. There's too many options. I would buy everything. I would just try it. And then um, I started doing beer blogs and then I started home brewing and we won some homebrew awards at me and my brother. Mm -hmm. um, and then it got to the point where I, I not only saw them as, uh, as like something fun, but I saw them, well, I was like, wow, these guys are like small local businesses mm -hmm. that are doing something that I and people like love. So then I was, and for me, my dad's always in his own company. So like small business has always been something that, that I've like loved. And I'm like, wow, small businesses, beer, that's delicious. And then I just was like in love with it. And then uh, Ducal mm -hmm. hit me up because I was very vocal mm -hmm. on like Twitter and, and like everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ducal hit me up and basically offered me a job. Nice. Um, and then I started off as a sales rep there. Cool. Didn't have any experience in the sales industry at all. Left the job, took a big pay cut because I yeah. wanted to do this. And then got to do this. I, I got to I work at Frisco Tap House as, as a beer buyer. I had 160 beers on tap at, at any time. I, I mean, I, I bought a ton of beer. Like the guys who are in charge of Frisco now, his, mm -hmm. his name is Zach. Mm -hmm. They're one of the, the when you're at Frisco, you're, it's, it's Frisco, Max's. Yep. I mean, that's, that's it. Like, yeah, those are the two places that my friend Joe goes all the time and yeah. he's taken me to because you're gonna have so many choices. And, and, and that's the thing too, like I learned so much. Like I was always on the beer sales side mm -hmm. for, for years. And then now I'm on the beer buying side and I have 160 taps to fill, and now everyone's coming to me. Yeah. So I, 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 it was cool. I got to learn a lot of that. Uh, I'm like that side of the industry, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be on this side again. So right. now I'm here. That's cool. Yeah, but it's because of Duke Hall. That's awesome. They they gave me a chance, and I literally had no experience at all. Yeah. I just liked beer, nice. and I was a vocal person about liking beer. So, and that was it. I mean, that's really it. And then I. I started up my first, my first professional job was a sales rep at, at a Duke Hall. Yeah. That was my first, first job in, in the industry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all I really did was worked 70 hours a week doing tastings and, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, festivals. I started during the summer. So it was like the busy time. Right. Like I remember I had never even done a festival at all. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, by the way, you're in Fairfax today. And I was like, oh, I've never even set up a jockey box by myself. <laughs> like I had no idea what I was doing. Like I literally showed up by myself and I'm trying to sell this stuff up, wow. which is really cool because other breweries were there to help me. I've cool. learned a lot since then. Mm -hmm. And now I take pride in, in, in like trying to know more than, than the person next to me. Not trying to, I'm not trying to be like, you know, like I know more, but like my, my goal is to always know more mm -hmm. so that I can always help somebody out because that's what happened to me when, when I, when I remember the very first festival, I could not get anything to work. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. But do call didn't really understand what was going on because it was new markets they were opening and they were swamped and they're like, Ty, cool, you can pour beer. And I'm like, I can pour beer. Yeah. I don't know how to set up the beer. Right. So like, now I always try to be like the guy, like, like I try to get to festivals early enough so that I can set up and then walk around and try to see like, like who needs help. Like not necessarily, it, it, it's like troubleshooting, but just like, hey, your tent needs help. Okay, let me do that. Do anything tap. Like I, I really try to help everybody out because this is a, this whole this whole brewery thing is a family. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we're we're all trying to do the same thing, and that's take business away from AB and Bev and all like the big guys. Like that's what we're not like. I don't want to go out there and say that, but if you can convert somebody from AB and Bev, you're really going to help your 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 a local a state out because it's more it's more money to the state. But then also it just helps craft beer in general. So if I can go out and help you set up your beer and be open on time, it's mm -hmm. only going to have somebody sit there and stand there and then drink your beer and then be converted, right. basically. 
it's like a religion. You're trying to convert somebody from something else to being saved, you know? <laughs> like that's, that's, that's well, that's what I've always appreciated about the crap beer industry is it, and it's, it's difficult to explain to other people because it's not like any other business model out there. It's and there are people who are like, I don't understand. They're like, they're competitors. Why would you open next door or down the street from another brewery? Yeah. Why would you help them? And this is why you do that. And it's just difficult to get people to understand. That's just how crap beer is. is. That's, that's our vibe. That's what we do. Yep. And that's the thing too, like a perfect example is uh, when we were trying to open up, we uh, didn't have the capacity to brew a trash panda. Mm. And so we went to Black Flag and brewed it at their place and they're, right, they're up the street. Are they a competitor? Probably our number one competitor because we're right across the street from each other. Mm -hmm. But also because of them, we have people coming to here. And because of us, there's people that go in there because now they can drive out to this area and instead of hitting just Black Flag or just this area, they can come here and hit up two breweries. Yep. So now, it's, now, now they have no problem driving to this area in this weird industrial park where, we are, where we're at, but they don't have an issue doing it because of us right. or them and Sapwood and Reckless. Like, mm -hmm. I'm totally, totally fine with it. Look at Frederick. Frederick is growing nonstop, mainly because of breweries. Yeah. Not because of people. It's because that breweries are there and people have things to do. So now it's the place to live because there's things to do and the things to do is the breweries. Yeah, and then when we were talking with Jake at Smoketown, that was what he pointed out. He said that uh, they have the most breweries per capita oh, in the yeah. state of Maryland. Yeah, and when they expanded from their Brunswick location and put the Creekside one up in there, you know, they're right there nestled between Idiom and Attaboy and they're right there. Fantastic. And, and it's like, it's a great place. He said, because you can just go for a weekend and hit two or three different places. It's yep. all walking distance. So, yeah. Yeah, speaking of Idiom, we do have, we, we do have two clubs going on with them. That I, for some reason, it's funny because I was actually drinking it. We have a, a toasted marshmallow, a Schwartz beer here. Okay. Which is tasting good. I love <laughs> that it. That sounds good. And then uh, you can try that later. The, the other Coke, or not the Coke, the toasted marshmallow is not in it yet, but just the base of it. Mm -hmm. If we can that right now, yeah. if somebody gave me a six pack of that, I would drink this all. Like, so That's we're cool. going to try that in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, for sure. And then we're doing a, a black IPA at, at a Idiom. Hmm. So like, it's funny. Like, we do a lot of like... Um, a lot of trash panda um, variations. Collabs. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, all the variations here. So, so we did lazy panda mm -hmm. with a mollies, which is a blend of trash panda and hazelnut lazy. We did um, um, crooked panda, which is a blend of um, who was it? Manor Hill. Why am I? I was like, <laughs> oh man, man. Like, Corey's gonna be I, upset. You guys uh, forgot about him. <laughs> I'm sorry, Curtin House. I was working on my Duclaw too. Um, Little Kurt we did a collab with with uh, them and did did their uh, crooked beak and then trash panda. But then we also had more fun with it. And then we did a uh, trashy beak, which was oh, the same exact thing. We just soured it here. So we did oh. a sour IPA and they did a regular hazy IPA. So it's, it's, we have like this panda collab series. That's, that's like, a good on. thing though. I mean, that's, that's cool. a pretty cool thing. I remember when we talked with Corey at Manor Hill, we were talking about the story of, of Crooked Beak. And, yeah. and when you get the story of it and then you hear about this brave rooster who basically <laughs> saved all the chickens from the fox and lost his yeah. life, you're like, Every time I drink a Crooked Beak, I kind yeah, of so cheer up. I'm it. like, exactly. it's honor of Crooked Beak. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we were like really excited to, to, to do that with him. And then the Lazy Panda thing with Molly's was great. It was good. And then it's like when we're doing an idiom, it's a black IPA. And it has nothing to do with pan or mm -hmm. like any kind of trash panda. Or black panda. <laughs> it's a black IPA, but it's with all the hops from Trash Panda. And if you look mm -hmm. in the label, it's a raccoon howling in the dark. So it's called Crying in the Dark. Nice. But it's it still has a little raccoon that, that, that we're known for that that's like howling at... Uh, like off a mountain side. it's it's really cool but we try to have fun with everything mm -hmm. and it's like trash panda like it's such a unique name in this area so we're like if we're gonna do an ipa collab let's just put something pan in it like what's your most popular beer our popular beer we'll, we'll and not necessarily have a blend whereas mm -hmm. like lazy panda was a 100 percent tweak like take from this put to this take from this put to this mm -hmm. uh beer like okay. it was legit like we had both recipes and there were fairly similar and they had they used the exact same amount of oats as we used wheat or something like that mm -hmm. and then vice versa same amount of wheat as we used oats so we just basically flopped them and then we used citra mosaic simcoe and they used like vic secret and citra and then we like took away the vic secret and just added mosaic so literally a hundred percent blend of the beer and it turned out phenomenal that was like, good holy crap. people like I, i'm shocked that, that people like were were like that that like gung ho over that beer too. It was, it was well it was done. Great. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, at a Frisco in a in a Crofton. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of this, and I know Josh at Molly's is too. We tapped it, and it took 45 minutes, and the sixel kicked. 
Wow. It kicked 10 minutes faster than main dinner. Oh, that's fantastic. Dinner, not lunch. Main <laughs> dinner. We did that. A local nice. brewery did that. That's awesome. And so I was really excited about that. So our plan is to brew it again during the summer. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, batch we did was a 15 barrel batch, ended up being 10 barrels. 10 barrels split between two breweries is not a lot of beer. Yeah. 35 cases each and four half cases each. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Not a lot of beer. So we're going to do a 20 barrel batch. They'll do a 15 barrel batch and we'll release it at the same time again. Only. We'll all have beer. We're going to spread it. They actually put it out in the market and have fun with it. So but this cool. time we couldn't put it in the market because we, where? Like, what beer? We sold out of all the cases in, in a day instead of a day. Yeah. So, yeah, which is cool. That is cool. I think that's one of my most favorite things that's happened in a, in a while with a collab. Mm -hmm. or, or, or like in the beer industry is two breweries come together and it kicks a, it, it kicks the time frame of, of a beer that is, a very popular beer and two local breweries got to beat that absolutely i think that's cool that is and very i cool. really take pride in that because of it that is awesome so, that's a that's a good fact I'm to know it. yeah it is, it is. <laughs> so i'm happy that's awesome um maybe uh tell us what some of your biggest challenges have been money capital mm -hmm. growing pains everything going wrong that that everything could go wrong has gone wrong i mean we we actually kid about kid about saying that this brewery should have been called murphy's law brewing I mean, legit, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong here. Mm. Doesn't matter what it is. Just dumb things, but I mean, things are, are, are on the up and up. I mean, we, we had a vandalism last year where we lost everything. And mm. then we had, you know, 10 beers on tap. Well, um, so, we, so like we had, you know, five beers we had to dump. And then when you don't have those five beers and they take a month to brew again, then you don't have the sales from those beers coming in. So then you don't have money to buy beer. Yeah. Then it, it, it got really scary for, for a little while. Mm. Um, but I mean, money is always an issue because you can, you can sell a ton of beer, but beer, you don't make a lot of money in beer. That's mm -hmm. the issue. Mm -hmm. You have to sell a, an, an exorbitant amount of beer to make money. That's well worth it. So we're just happy we can pay our bills, pay our employees and do we want to do yeah. we're we're glad we got to expand mm -hmm. and after expansion like now we're sitting more comfortable because we can actually produce more beer yeah. but we can only produce a, a certain amount of beer then you're you're and it's funny because people some breweries start off really small mm -hmm. and i tell people all the time go big just do the 20 barrel because a seven barrel to a 20 barrel is only like eight to ten thousand dollar difference mm. and the amount of beer you can brew more like you're going to run into issues of not producing enough beer very cool problem to have and you think that's a cool problem having that and you think that's what you want to have but it's not because you don't have enough money to 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 actually upgrade because you can't just upgrade you can't get like you know a three barrel system and then be like okay well i'm gonna get a, a 15 barrel uh, uh tank you did the brew five times if you would have just started off with a 15 barrel you could have brewed five three barrel and split them up and done it all so that's why i would try to tell people just go bigger than you think you it's easier to grow into it than it is to stress and not have it. We still think, like, I mean, 20 barrel is a good size. Our canning line already is, is, is not keeping up with us. Mm. And it's a really good canning line. Mm -hmm. We wish we just would have got this step bigger. Nothing to do with the brand. The brand is effing fantastic. It's, we just should have went bigger. So there's stuff like that. But mm. it's mainly just because money. Gotcha. I mean, we're a small company that has a lot. I mean, 10,000 square foot space costs a lot to be in. Yeah. And that's the main issue is overhead. Yeah. So. so that's a great segue into telling me how you were able to stay committed during those difficult times, especially like you said, when it got really tight and questionable at that one point. If you, if you start skimping out and cheating on ingredients and things, things, then the only way you're going to ever make money, you can brew as much beer as you want, but if you don't sell it, then it doesn't mean anything at all. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you start sacrificing quality, it doesn't matter if you're doing it just to get by figure out a way to actually do it right because nobody's going to buy your, they don't care if you, if you didn't have enough money to, to make it taste right. Mm -hmm. All they're going to remember is I didn't like that last beer. I'm not going to buy anymore. And that's what we did. We just said, Oh, well, it's going to cost us more than we can spend on this, but hopefully it sells. Mm -hmm. And thank God it did. So yeah, it was tough. We still haven't got the insurance money from the vandalism yet. It's been over a year. Wow. So they owe us like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Wow. Something stupid. So that might have to come from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't fun. So. Oh, my gosh. But, I mean, it, it worked. We're uh, proud that we've never skimped down on ingredients. We're proud that we've never, like, did anything stupid as far as... We've always been really upfront and honest with things, too. Like, hey, we can't do this because of this. 
So uh, share with me what you think contributed to your success. Us being open, honest, and uh, um, open, honest, luck, and really just making sure that the beer tastes good before it goes mm -hmm. out, or at least tolerable. <laughs> no, it's just like I really think that like when you're when you're totally transparent with the issues that we've had, as it's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. If you're not transparent and you try to hide things when you're when you're struggling. Then, then, then that's when people start to assume things that aren't right. Mm -hmm. When you assume things that aren't right, perception's reality, and we're and we're, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a perception's reality. Then that's what you are. It doesn't matter if you're not that. That's what you are. Right. So if you're transparent, then that's the perception. That's the reality. And sometimes you just have to be blatantly honest and upfront, even if it's embarrassing, even if it sucks. It's better than being or having a rumor take hold, and that's you. So, mm. that's a great point. That's really all it is. Yeah, that's the thing. Just be, just be upfront and honest with people. Gotcha. Well, again, share with people where they can find you guys online. Uh, Hysteria Brewery, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We have a Snapchat. I don't, I don't use, I don't use that enough. But yeah, just Hysteria Brewery on those three main things. Um, maybe try to be funny with everything with fun, but it's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Cool. Well, we'll make sure we put that on our website at sharepinepodcast.com cool. and on our show notes. Uh, well, Ty, I want to thank you for your time and for Anytime. sharing a pint with me. Share a Pint is released bi-weekly on Friday mornings and can be found at sharepintpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at share underscore pint. Show notes for this episode are available at sharepintpodcast.com. Music for the show, Groundwork, provided by Kevin McLeod and can be found online at incompetech.com. Share a Pine is made possible by help from the Community Media Center of Carroll County. Associated with the craft beer industry and have an interesting story you'd like to share on a future episode? Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at sharepinepodcast.com or email us at jerry at sharepinepodcast.com. Until the next time we share a pint, I'm Jerry Hollow. Prost.